Hi, uh, welcome back. You're with Terry Erasmus and today I'm going to be working on this fig tree, uh, ficus. Uh, it was imported originally from Taiwan. Uh, that was about uh, almost a year ago now and um, the tree has grown fairly well. Um, you'll see that there's a tremendous amount of shoots originating at uh, a single point. And uh, so the idea of today's work is going to be to thin some of those shoots out, but first we need to remove some of the leaves so that we can see into the structure of the tree before we do that. Uh, so the first step will be to defoliate or partially defoliate the tree because I'm only going to remove uh, the, the inner leaves and we're going to leave the tips of the branches and the leaves near the tip as well untouched. Um, the moment we cut that off it's going to stop extending and I want the branches to extend because as you will see later on there's a number of branches that still need to fatten up quite quite a bit and so I'm going to be using sacrifice branching uh, or whips uh, to essentially achieve that. This is a good example of an area that's very congested with growth uh, and that needs to be thinned out. So what I'm going to be doing is selecting the strongest shoots and hopefully, well, hopefully in the right, in the, the, the best positions and removing the weaker inner growth because that's really just stealing away energy from the, the more vigorous uh, growth. And obviously you want to develop or yeah, develop the structure of your trees with the, the most vigorous branches. So working with the tree in that sense. There are a number of of these quite large scars, um, obviously left from the original, whether it was field grown or uh, just development branches that have just been lopped off. Um, so I doubt very much that I'll be working on that at all today uh, to, to start hiding that. Um, the branches are simply not strong enough really to to start healing or callousing over that uh, these areas. Um, so I'll probably just leave that for a future, um, a future uh, occasion. To defoliate ficus, you can use one of three tools. You can either use defoliation shears, a pair of sharp trimming scissors, or you can use your fingernails. Uh, for the fingernail technique, you will need fairly long nails, however. Um, my wife can't stand it, so unfortunately I will have to be using one of the two tools. I prefer using the defoliation shears because it essentially has a spring action due to the way that it's, it's, it's fabricated. Um, with trimming scissors, it does tire your fingers out more because you're having to open and close the scissors every time you cut a leaf off. Um, there isn't too many leaves on, uh, on this tree, so it's not too bad. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, trimming scissors will, will be better. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, that technique now. To use the defoliation shears, you're just going to cut off the leaf, leaving a little bit of the stalk behind because it's at the base of that leaf stalk that a bud can develop. And then we're going to remove um, the leaves, leaving about three or four leaves at the, at the end of the terminal of the branch. If you prefer to use your fingernails, then it's important that you uh, use the nail almost like a pair of scissors and still cut the leaf stalk. Um, otherwise, you're gonna, if you just rip the, the, the whole leaf, stalk, leaf off, then you're going to damage the bud at the base. Um, as I said, I don't have any nails, so it's very difficult for me to do this. Uh, but that's essentially how the technique would work and that will of course work a lot faster than either the defoliation shears or the trimming scissors. Um, but you maybe just need to grow your nails a little bit longer. Off camera the tree was defoliated and um, <clears throat> I just want to add also the reason why, we, why it was necessary to defoliate. Of course, when the tree is full of leaves, it's very difficult to see the structure of the tree. So the first, uh, the first reason and the most important reason, of course, is to, to be able to see what you're working with. So removing the leaves reveals the structure and then allows you to make those uh, a more informed or better decisions as to what branches you want to keep and which ones you can afford to, to remove. So as you can see, I have the trees been defoliated and as I went through the tree, I also removed the growth that was obviously not going to be necessary, um, but then also some of the growth that after removing the leaves also 
um, proved to be uh, unnecessary to the future structure of the tree. The other reason for removing the leaves is also to generate uh, interior buds, <clears throat> which can, uh, can perhaps be used uh, to contribute to the structure to the structural branching, um, those buds can be grown into structural branches that can be used to contribute uh, to creating the canopy that, uh, that obviously is our long-term objective with this piece of material. Now I know I suggested that I would uh, possibly not start uh, carving or reducing the stubs of the branches. Uh, the primary branches, um, but I decided that I would go ahead and use a knob cutter, which is this kind of tool, um, to, to hollow out these cuts, just to shape them a little bit better. Uh, it is, um, you know, if the branches are too thin, uh, by, by, by reducing these knobs, or stubs rather, uh, too early, uh, it does result in further dieback as the sap flow is established. So you run the risk if the branchlets are too small or too weak, um, that if you reduce the, the, the stubs too far, um, the dieback might, might continue and, and go further back, in, in which case you may lose these branches. But um, I think the tree is strong enough and the branches that I have cut back to or shaped the the knobs uh, or stubs back to is strong enough to keep the sap flow going into those areas. But yes, that is um, that is a kind of a decision that you need to make um, and possibly just wait a little bit longer before the branches are, uh, when they're a little bit stronger, a little bit thicker, and there's much more sap flow, then there will be less dieback on the stubs. But the stubs in this case were quite excessive in, in, in some, of the, particularly in some areas. Um, and, and, and so I decided to, to reduce it now. It obviously is easier to do it now uh, <clears throat> when, the, um, when the ramification um, isn't you know, further on down the road um, and it's more, it becomes more and more difficult to get into these areas uh, with tools. So when you're uh, reducing stubs like these, just be careful with your tools uh, because if there is some dead wood, the dead wood is generally harder or usually um, harder to cut uh, than the live tissue. In the case of the ficus, I think it's the other way around. Uh, well, at least in this case, the wood is fairly old, so it's starting to rot a little bit. And uh, so it's fairly soft. But just be sure uh, when you're cutting that you're not... Uh, uh, stressing the, the the cutting tools that you're using because uh, they are they are designed and made for live wood not dead wood and uh, so you need to compensate for that usually by cutting thinner material if it's dead and then with shaping cuts like this you want to try to um, as far as possible try and shape the cut so that the callus is at the back uh, or is not going to be visible or that the wound will not be visible. So if, um, if all goes well and it calluses over, then it will become invisible um, in time. But it's, it, especially on these larger cuts, it can take uh, a number of years before it, it, it has callused over entirely. And so you want to try and um, hide those uh, scars as much as possible. Um, for <clears throat> so by by shaping the cut towards the inside in this case um, the cut will be less visible um, from when viewed on the outside or viewed from the side of the tree and uh, so I'm just using a knob cutter and I'm just carve essentially carving out this shape um, the stub that was here and in this case it was uh, uh, quite an opportune time to do this because the stub was getting quite close to the, um, the, the section, this branch just above it and um, it, it, that's going to be, as this develops, as this area develops, it's going to be really difficult to get in here to, re to reduce, reduce this, this stub. So this one is particularly um, important to work on now. But also there's quite a number of branches that are growing from it. So I don't think there would be much dieback 
um, at all, if any. Because when you, when you do expose the live tissue again, you do want to ensure that there's enough sap flow in that uh, part of the tree um, that callus can start forming. Um, otherwise, if there isn't, it's, it's just going to die back further and, um, and, and you, you're going to go further back on that structural portion of, of the tree. So you need enough sap flow so that, um, that's, that, that the tree can section off or uh, seal off that area that's been exposed and then start covering it up with, with callus, uh, which will obviously then cover up the, ultimately cover up the entire scar. And uh, then you won't, you should not see it any longer. Usually I would seal cuts, but on a ficus because of the latex that uh, it um, exudes when it is cut, uh, I, that is its natural um, response to live tissue being exposed or cut. And uh, so therefore, as far as I know, it's not necessary to, to seal uh, ficus. As I mentioned earlier on, I, when I was defoliating uh, the tree, I did remove some of the branches, but in areas like this, there are still too many branches. And uh, so this needs to be reduced. Um, so I'll just take you through the process. Basically, I need to um, extend this branch. Obviously, it, it's now just ending as a stub. And, um, and now it needs to go into uh, several smaller branches and uh, to taper off. So there needs to be a more gradual uh, a, a, a tapering from this main primary branch into um, as, it, as it nears the, the profile of the tree. Um, so I, if I look at these two, the, the two shoots here, I kept both of them in order to make a decision uh, now at a later, so at a later stage. So I, I need to make that choice now. Um, but if I look at where this branch is positioned and where this one is, this one is not as ideal because if it develops into this area, it's going to essentially develop above this branch. So, and, and there's a little bit more of a void in this area. So I'd rather keep that one and remove this one. Um, and this will also then allow me to reduce this, this scar here further to carve it a little bit better back to this branch because then this one could be a side branch and um, um, so, so this branch or this um, big wound here can be further reduced and shaped because it's still very blunt although it was a, a little bit better shaped than it was it, it still is very blunt bluntly cut and uh, but now by removing that I can shape this a little bit better as well. This is the, this will be a side branch. This will be the leader. Uh, I can now decide if I want to keep a branch like this, which can then be used to fill up in this space, but I'm not gonna need um, so many. So this is, this is a good branch um, here. Uh, and it's far enough away from this as well. And also having these two branches, the, the one might be eliminated in favor of something coming out of the trunk into this space. Uh, but certainly for now, having these two branches will help to callus over this rather large wound as well. So if I think I'm going to remove this and um, then I can also shape the cut a little bit better. So this one, this one, Although that one is lower down, it's a it's not such an abrupt angle, 
Uh, so maybe actually this could rather remove this and keep this one. And now that allows me to shape the cut a little bit better. And then, like I said earlier, you want to try and make sure that this is the front of the tree. Yeah, looking at it in this way. So shape the cut, if you can, angled this way, not the other way around. Because now, then you would see that from the front. In this way, the, the, the shape of the cut is going to be towards the back. And uh, when the ficus callus is over, it's quite a thick rolling callus. Uh, so you, you need to also compensate for that when you are shaping the cut to know what it's, you know, to have some idea of what it will look like in the future. Here's another interesting area that needs to be addressed. Uh, this was a stub that I showed you earlier uh, being reduced. And, but I've now got one, two, three branches coming out at very, uh, very close to one another. And then a little bit further down, I have this one. Uh, this one definitely can be kept and wired into a slightly better position. But out of these three, I, I will not be able to keep all three. So I think I'm going to eliminate this middle one. Uh, this one can then be wired into position as well as this one. So this by far is the largest scar uh, on this tree and it's in fact an extremely dominant trunk line or branch line, I don't know what you want to call it, a second trunk probably is the best way to describe it, uh, which I will show you a view of it later in this video. Uh, but there are four branches coming out here, they're all fairly strong branches and uh, I know I will not keep all of them. But for now, I would like to keep them in order to help heal this over as fast as possible. So I probably will end up uh, eliminating one of these two and then possibly one of these two. Or maybe I can keep uh, both side branches and just eliminate one of these two. Yeah, but that will be done at a later stage. But for now, I'm going to use these branches just to make sure that I've got enough sap flow into this area to help heal this over. In this apical area I've got quite a lot of branches. There were a lot more that we thinned, that I thinned out, uh, but it, there is still a lot of branches in this area. However, I do quite like to keep um, quite a lot of branches in this portion or region of the tree so that I can, for one, uh, obviously promote sap flow right up to the top of the tree, um, but also because it helps me to build my apex, because of course this is going to be the densest part of the tree. So I like to keep my options open and rather allow uh, more branches to develop than I'm going to need. But obviously you need to make sure that you're not going to get uh, a reverse taper issue happening or a big sort of fist, a lump forming in this space. So you do need to remove the branches uh, before uh, it, 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 that becomes a problem. But you don't necessarily need to do all of them at the same time. You can just remove one uh, or two at a time. And then as time progresses, maybe the following season, you remove another one. Uh, but as I say, it's important uh, to, to keep quite a lot of branches in this space so that you can build your highly, highly uh, ramified uh, apical um, area for, for these trees. Um, so there are a number of branches here which I will now pr uh, proceed to wire more or less into position. And they are, there's a number of them that are fairly close to one another. But I would like to keep them nevertheless and then at a later stage when I see what areas are, are getting a little bit too dense or in contrast what areas are lacking in density I would then make uh, pruning decisions to thin this further. With the, uh, the bulk of the pruning now done or I think most of it uh, barring maybe one or two sh uh, branches that will still need to be cut I believe the tree is now prepared for wiring uh, so now I'm going to go ahead and apply some aluminium wire uh, to the tree and and then the idea is really just to position the branches in at the angles that I want them to develop into so that those so essentially the primary branches have been set uh, and now do the secondaries and and trying to direct them into areas that are uh, empty um, to start filling them in 
uh, and just give maybe some subtle bends to the to the branches at the same time. Um, but uh, also, as I mentioned right at the beginning, when we defoliated the tree, we didn't trim the ends. So the idea is for these branches still to uh, to extend quite uh, quite a lot, uh, which will of course then uh, help to to callus over these scars. So the wiring sh needs to be fairly loose. Uh, so that it allows some uh, expansion in the in the in the in the um, in the girth of the branches uh, to occur, and for them also to set, because ficus also does have a tendency to, even though it's wired, to then go back into if it's removed uh, when the wire is removed, it has a tendency for those branches to to spring back into the positions that they were in. Um, so it's a good idea to wire the branches while they're still quite young um, and, and put those bends in so that they can set in that position. I always advise to start wiring from the bottom of the tree uh, because that allows you to set your angles so that as you move to the top of the tree the angle changes. If you start from the top and you work down to the bottom sometimes uh, well your angles could be completely mixed up because if your angles or at this point in uh, the tree is too far down, then by the time you get to the, the lowest branch, the, the angles are perhaps below what the pot will allow you to, to position the branch in. So it's better to, uh, to start with the first branches. And, um, and with the styling of this tree, you'll notice that the, that the tree is very much, looks like an umbrella. So it's a very, very rounded canopy. It's not pointy, not triangular at all. It's very much uh, an umbrella with the lowest branches being essentially horizontal. So these branches will be shaped in a very hor horizontal fashion. And then as I move up into the apex of the tree, the angles of the branches will change into a more vertical uh, stance. Ultimately, the definition, uh, if you like, will be given to the canopy so it doesn't look like, a, like a, a, um, what's the, the term is often used today of a helmet. Um, if you still uh, create smaller areas of foliage, so foliage pads, uh, that gives definition to the canopy because it breaks that solid line of the outline or the silhouette of the, of the tree's canopy. Um, and you can do that from the bottom all the way up to the top with the apical area being generally one treated as one uh, foliage pad on its, on its own. Um, but you can break these other spaces up and it also it gives a, a more interesting negative space to the, to the positive space that's consumed uh, by the canopy itself. When you angle this last section, it's always good to, to angle it up towards the sun and that just actually, uh, helps uh, the branch to grow faster, just that little bit. And so what you'll see is that I'm putting in some very gentle curves. Um, the angle that I'm wiring at as well is also a very large angle, um, but that allows me to make uh, very sort of gentle flowing movements. And uh, you need to put movement into the branches not only when viewed from the front but uh, or from the top it needs to be viewed from from all the angles there needs to be some interest to the to the branches so there needs to be some backwards and forwards um, some up and down sort of motion and then also the angle that the branch comes out from the primary branch um, is also important that curve needs to be a very small curve not a 90 degree type of uh, very harsh or acute um, cur curve. It needs to be, it needs to flow uh, from, from that and, and that was also a very, um, that was the, the angle that the branches were emerging from the primary branches were very strong factors that I considered when I was determining which branches to, to cut off and which ones to keep.
So I'm, I'm now done with wiring and positioning the branches. And uh, so that's all the work that I'll be doing on the tree at the moment. It will now go back outside and um, watered, fertilized quite aggressively. Uh, the idea will obviously be to have these branches develop quite strongly and uh, quite long. So, you know, quite a meter long or something. Uh, whatever it takes in order to get the base of the branch to thicken up uh, to the girth that then um, makes a, a decent or uh, an appealing taper from the primary branch into the secondary branch. And um, so the goal will also obviously be to uh, start callousing over the these large wounds that have just been cleaned up a little bit. Some of the bends that you might have seen me putting into these branches uh, over here are not very uh, not very gentle. Um, uh, some of the others are gentle, as I said. I would you know you got to follow the same branch uh, or the pattern that the branches, the primary branches, have been set in. You need to follow that. Uh, but some of these areas where I've put in quite a dramatic bend, uh, that is in an effort just to uh, make a, for a more interesting continuation to these primary branches. And also as these get very, uh, will get very much thicker, you need to bear in mind that what looks like a very uh, 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 acute angle will actually soften quite tremendously over time. So you need to uh, compensate for that by making quite aggressive curves, um, knowing that it will soften over time. Um, so that's something else to remember. One of the unique features of this tree is this very, very heavy branch uh, that is very low down here. Um, it's gonna be interesting how, this, how I can develop this uh, as part of the structure of the tree. Because it is such a dominant branch, it actually competes, or trunk, I don't know which you would call it, uh, but it competes with the primary trunk, this mass over here, obviously. Um, and, and it's going out at a very horizontal fashion. Now, I'm not sure if this was intentional uh, by the original artist that developed the material, or if it was uh, just forgotten, but, um, one option would be to eliminate it uh, entirely from the trunk, uh, but I think that uh, you would lose some character that is uh, unique to this tree. And um, so it, I'm, I, what I would like to do is to get something developing out of the top of it. There is a branch that I have uh, kept and wired into that position. It's not in the ideal spot. Uh, if I could get something around about yeah, that's coming out of the crest or the outward bend of this uh, branch, um, I would prefer that. Uh, but I need to develop something into this space because there's a, a large void in this area. Um, but I do suspect that the tree will uh, break a lot of buds out on, on, on these areas now that have now been exposed to a lot more sun. Uh, so I'll watch out for that. Otherwise, I may just graft, uh, a try grafting onto this uh, branch here. Yeah. Um, so that's about it for today. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Um, just a quick one. Um, and uh, But figs are a wonderful species to work on. Very rewarding, very robust, uh, and uh, ideally suited to the climate that I'm in, which is uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And uh, so thanks very much for watching. Uh, uh, I hope that you have subscribed. If you haven't, please do. And please, of course, share the videos. Uh, I appreciate that. And uh, until next time, take care. Goodbye.